Southern California, good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. Today we have ourselves quite a show as we have a lot to get into in the world of Southern California sports such as UCLA softball being one win away from advancing out of the Super Regionals. Can they get past Georgia a second time or will the Bulldogs show a little more bite? Also, LAFC advanced out of the round of 16 in the U.S. Open Cup. Can LAFC bring it home in the U.S. Open Cup? And can they take down Atlanta? And the Galaxy tied against Charlotte, which isn't bad, but I'm starting to be a little concerned about those Galaxy. And then I'm going to be breaking down the Chargers schedule as well as the Rams schedule as I got another guest here, which you all might know who he is. And in addition, my guest and I will be talking about who the Lakers should hire as their new head coach. Also, Shohei Otani records his first walk-off for the Dodgers. How special is that for Shohei Otani? And how are the Dodgers doing as of late? As well as Shohei Otani's old team and the Padres. All that more here on the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. This is Terry Rodriguez bringing you another edition of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome one, welcome all to another edition of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. Thank you all for joining me on this beautiful Friday afternoon, Friday morning, Friday evening, Friday wherever you are listening from. Either way, you have made your way into episode 182 of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. And without any further delay, let us begin. But first and foremost, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show would not be where it's at without IE Sports Radio providing the platform to go live on Spreaker. Please do follow IE Sports Radio on several different social media platforms such as X formerly known as Twitter, TikTok, and on Instagram. And we also have a Facebook page for those that still use Facebook. All you just have to do is type in the word IE and sports and radio in the search bar, like us, and then follow us. And we have a website, iesportsradio.com, for all of your latest sports news, our blog, our Hall of Fame, our pages dedicated to each podcast, such as the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, our Fans of the Month, our community forum, and our merchandise shop. For the last 10 years, iSports Radio has been bringing you amazing content ranging from interviewing legendary athletes, coaches, and other authorized media personnel to building tailor-made shows dedicated to all major sports cities around the country. Thank you to everyone for all of your support and for making iSports Radio your direct feed for all that sports for life. And a huge shout to our two sponsors, Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Follow them on Instagram at Planet Jerky and on Facebook, Planet Jerky. Also, our second sponsor is Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B. Follow them on Instagram at Seal the Deal underscore Wax Stamps. And our two sponsors will talk to you on who they are and what they bring to the table. Sports Radio fans, this show is brought to you by Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky. Planet Jerky is the official jerky of the 2022 California League champion Lake Elsinore Storm, single A affiliate of the San Diego Padres. This all brisket jerky has gluten free options, contains no MSG, no sodium nitrate, is low in sugar, and high in protein. Go to their website at planetjerky.net. 
follow them on Instagram at Planet Jerky. Planet Jerky, the jerky that's on a whole other planet. Sports Radio fans, be sure to check out our sponsor, Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B. You just finished your very own wedding or baby shower invitations and you're looking for that extra special touch? Maybe you just wrote a letter to a relative or a friend and you want to add to their smile when they receive it. Then seal the deal with Cecilia's handmade sealing wax stamps for your invitations, letters, and gifts. You bring the deal, we'll bring the seal. You can find them on Instagram at seal the deal underscore wax stamps and on Facebook, seal the deal wax seals. That's right, everybody. Definitely do check out Planet Jerky Premium Brisket Beef Jerky, as well as Seal the Deal Wax Seals by Cecilia B. There are two sponsors for on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that sports, and they help keep the lights on. And the way you can follow the SoCal Supreme Sports Show on social media is on X Formula known as Twitter, at SoCal Show ISR. And you can follow me, Taren Rodriguez, on my personal account, at Taren Rodriguez one All right, let us begin. As It's Drewski is in the chat room. Thank you for popping in. He says, what's up, Taryn? Have a great show, my guy. Well, thank you very much, my man. And hope you're out, you're doing well in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is my brother's neck of the woods. All right. But let us begin now. We're actually going to go in reverse order just because, like I said, I have a guest. And you all might probably know who he is. But um, we're actually going to start off with Dumb Dumb of the Week. So I normally save that for last, but... This time around, we're going with Dumb Dumb of the Week first. This is an award I like to give out to to an organization or a person that does or says something stupid. Nobody is safe from this award, as anybody can get this Dumb Dumb of the Week award. All right, and we have... I was going to give three out, but I'll, I'll only stick with two just because of time constraints. So this was actually going to be mentioned on last week's show, but it actually didn't cross my mind. But this guy... I used to have a lot of respect for him, even though he was on a division rival. I, I, as you all know, I am a big Chargers fan. I obviously bleed the powder blue and whatnot. But after hearing what this guy had to say, I was very disappointed in what he said. So this one comes from one man named Harrison Butker. So And... I think you know where this is going. He said he had a few choice words in terms of like motherhood and what females should do in regards to motherhood. Well, I will just say females should do whatever the heck they want and you have no right to tell them what they sh- what they can and can't do. It really really is was stupid on what he said and he's gotten a lot of backlash for it. And heck, he even got roasted by the Chargers social media team. I mean, yes, everyone is probably going to say, "Oh, who cares?" The Chargers have no rings, while the Chiefs have four. But the Chargers social media team roasted Harrison Butker in his in their uh, schedule release video as it actually showed Harrison Butker in the kitchen baking, I think, a, a pie, and then cooking and cleaning and whatnot. So I got to give a big W award to the Chargers social media team as, as they let Harrison Butker have it. But Harrison Butker... Your little, your little comments in regards to... And the, and the worst part about it is is that he said this at a graduation. If he said this on like a podcast, maybe it'd be understandable. 
But you can't just say this in front of a graduation, in front of like many graduating women who are about to go into the next phase of their lives. Not everyone wants to be a mother and whatnot. Everyone has other dreams. Some want to be a flag football player. Some want to actually be an astronaut. Some want to be fashion models. Like, who is Harrison Butker think he is dictating what women should and shouldn't do? I'm sorry, but Harrison Butker is dumb dumb of the week. I wanted to give it to him last week, but unfortunately it just didn't cross my mind. So Harrison Butker, you're dumb dumb of the week, number one, and we're actually gonna have three of these, but Harrison Butker is the first dumb dumb of the week. I'm so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I used to have a lot of respect for every kicker just because i don't want them to feel bad for missing a kick which could cost the team but now i don't have, i kind of lost a lot of respect for harrison butker and i hope the chargers i hope for for uh butker's sake he misses a crucial field goal against the chargers and then everyone on everyone basically dances on on the on at least Butker's grave. But that's the first Dumb Dumb of the Week. The second Dumb Dumb of the Week, this actually comes from one Adam Karnick. And I I was very perplexed at what happened yesterday. So apparently this might have been the worst call I've seen in terms of the MLB. We've had some really bad calls, but here we're, this might have been the worst. So I don't know if you all... I know this doesn't have anything to do with Southern California, but... The Baltimore Orioles and the Chicago White Sox were playing against one another yesterday. I think there was one out, and the Chicago White Sox had players on second and first base with one out. And then there was a pop-up ball, which eventually was an infield pop-up ball. And eventually the Orioles caught the ball to eventually record the out. But apparently there was catcher's interference, or interference in general, which... If you go back and look at it, I don't see what the where the interference was. It just doesn't make sense. And apparently, the catcher caught the ball fairly. It's not like the ball dropped and there was just no no evidence to overturn it. Like this was just so perplexing. So I, I just couldn't get. I just don't get it. I know the Chicago White Sox suck, but this just goes beyond belief and. The Whites, the, whoever the White Sox manager is, he should have just gone out there and defended his players. He's not getting dumb dumb the week, but the umpires who made the call of catcher's interference was are getting dumb dumb the week. I know it's not the right to blame officials and whatnot, but that is just a horrible, horrible, horrible call. I just don't see where the catcher's interference was. It just makes zero sense. And honestly, the umpires should be disappointed in themselves. I mean, I, I'm starting to wonder why we're getting shortages of umpires in terms of, like, youth sports. And I, I feel bad, but not for these umpires. It just really, really sucks. So, for the umpires who called the catcher's interference at the toward the end of the Chicago White Sox and Baltimore Orioles game, I just gotta say, that's just disappointing. And Drewski says, these umps been off to a bad start early in the baseball season. Yeah, and it's really disappointing, but, you know, we now might be starting to get uh, robo-umpires or robo-officials and whatnot. So, regardless, the umpires who basically, who who made that call at the white, at the end of the White Sox-Orioles game, you're dumb, dumb of the week. There's no debate. Heck, that might be the early nominee for dumb, dumb of the year. We're almost halfway through the year, mind you, but... They're dumb, dumb of the year. There's no debate on it. Gosh dang it, umps. You're so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. <laughs> <laughs> and Drewski says, AI umps. <laughs> yes, AI umps. Strike one. Strike two. Stri- three strikes. You are out. All right, but now for the third dumb dumb league, and this is going to be a little bit lighthearted, and I'm glad Drewski is uh, listening. So, Drewski, it's so, it's actually quite amazing that you're listening, just because, uh, Drewski, I I don't know if any of you know this, there is some content creator named Drewski, so if, I don't, so in case y'all are 
get y'all are getting mixed up on who I'm talking to live. This isn't the Drewski that's that has the memes of what do you mean by that or anything of that sort. Uh, this is it's Drewski, the host of Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio. So anyway, so our third dumb dumb of the week. Oh man, this one I actually saw this on Tuesday and I was just grossed out by this. So apparently. Ruby Rose, the girlfriend of Drewski, not the Drewski on Ice Sports Radio, the Drewski, the entertainer guy. Oh, man. So, prepare to be grossed out. And if you have a weak stomach, I'd suggest turning it down. So, as we all know, spaghetti obviously goes great with tomato sauce. But instead of tomato sauce, apparently Ruby Rose and Drewski were making spaghetti, but unfortunately, there was no spaghetti sauce. But instead of spaghetti sauce, Ruby Rose decide to use ketchup instead. Ruby Rose, whatever name that is, used ketchup on spaghetti. Uh, 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 ketchup on spaghetti. I'm no chef, but there are many things that don't belong on spaghetti. Ketchup I think is one of them. It's almost as bad as when I had ketchup on pizza when I was in Trinidad back when I was like, I think six or seven. But regardless, why? Why couldn't you just go out to the freaking grocery store, get yourself a jar of spaghetti sauce and literally use that? Why are you using ketchup on spaghetti? What? Uh, you, You also have Uber Eats, DoorDash, Instacart. You could literally just go to go to a freaking liquor store, a convenience store that's by you. Don't be using ketchup. Like I don't know whose bright idea was it to have ketchup on spaghetti, whether it was Ruby Rose's idea or her boyfriend. But regardless, that's just straight nasty. I just can't believe it. Somebody help me. Also, I gotta give a huge thank you to Spuds Chat or Spuds. Uh, a Rams fan who appeared on 3 and Out primetime face-offs as we helped get that win for the Rams. But um, spaghetti with ketchup. No, no, no. At least if you all see, have seen Elf, at least with the chocolate and the M&Ms and whatnot, that was pretty funny. This is not. This is not funny. I, ha- I basically said, I'm calling the police. I told Spuds Chat, I'm calling the police. Or Instacart, Uber Eats, or DoorDash. Because they need a jar of spaghetti sauce. Just, no, no, absolutely not. This is almost as bad as someone one time saying on X slash Twitter that Taco Bell is better than Taco Trucks. But this is, this is beyond terrible, dude. And with that, Ruby Rose... The girlfriend of Drewski seems... This is an entertainer, mind you. Like, I'm pretty sure they've got enough money to go out and buy a freaking jar of spaghetti sauce. Yes, and that is a big dum-dum. It's Drewski says, that's a big dum-dum. Seems money and beauty don't supply the brain with common sense. Exactly! Exactly. And fame as well. Fame does not supply the brain with common sense. But... I'm just saying, Ruby Rose and Drewski the Entertainer, not Drewski of Ice Sports Radio, y'all are dumb, dumb of the week. There's no debate. Tell it to him. So dumb. You are really dumb. Tell it to him one more time. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. <laughs> Again, at least in Elf, Will Ferrell made that funny when he put all that stuff on the spaghetti. But this was just straight nasty. I, I, hoped, I hope to never, ever come across that again. But this is why Twitter is not real life. Anyway, all right, that is enough for Dumb Dumb of the Week. We got to keep it pushing just because my, bro- my, my guest will be coming on momentarily. So, anyway... So let's discuss a little MLS action as LAFC did not play last week as they actually, well, they did play. They played on Tuesday when they took on L- Ludon, 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 Ludon 
in a round of 16 U.S. Open Cup match where LAFC just straight up spanked Ludon 3 to nothing. In the 8th minute... LAFC's, LAFC's Timothy Tillman scored, which eventually made it one nothing, and that was the halftime score for the LAFC Ludon match. Then in the 52nd minute, Christian Oliveira scored for LAFC to make it two nothing, and then Tomas Angel or Angel or Angel probably Angel Tomas Angel scored in the 61st minute to put LAFC up three nothing and. This Ludon team didn't really put up much of a fight, as they did have six shots on goal, which is pretty good. But LFC had six saves, and they only and uh, LFC only had one more corner kick than Ludon. So overall, this was a little bit of a sloppy match for LFC, but they wound up winning in strong and dominant fashion. So that's good. Their next U.S. Open Cup match is to be determined, but. Their next match overall is tomorrow when they hit the road to Magic City to take on Atlanta United. So you have that matchup right there. And Wednesday they actually have a, another quick turnaround as LAFC hosts Minnesota. So And then next Saturday LAFC hosts Dallas FC, which I think is pretty... I think that's going to be pretty good as well. So as for the Galaxy, they had the honor of hitting the road to Charlotte to take on Charlotte FC. And it was a 0-0 tie. So it's unfortunate as the sad and funny thing is, is that Charlotte and the Galaxy combined for just seven shots on goal. Charlotte had two shots and the Galaxy had five. And both teams had the same amount of save, same amount of saves as the opposing team had their shots. But the sad thing about the Galaxy is that they actually had six corner kicks compared to Charlotte's two. And in terms of overall shot attempts, the Galaxy had 18, while Charlotte had 12. So, all in all, this was just a little bit of a frustrating match. But Charlotte's pretty good, if you ask me. They're not a terrible team. It's just that the Galaxy just could not convert on its opportunities. So, the Galaxy is back in action Saturday when they host the Houston Dynamo. And then on Wednesday, the Galaxy will also conclude the Texas two-step when they host Dallas FC. And then next Saturday, the Galaxy will head down to the Windy City to take on the Chicago Red Stars. So they've got the t- Texas two-step this in their next two matches, and then they follow that up with a trip to the Windy City next Saturday. So looking at the standings for the Galaxy and LAFC, LAFC was idle, so they didn't really move up or move down. The Galaxy uh, moved down to number four as, unfortunately, they are sharing the number three spot with with, uh, Austin FC as Austin has a better win-draw-loss ratio record than the Galaxy. The Galaxy have seven draws, my dude. Yikes. That's pretty alarming if you ask me, even though the Galaxy have a better goal differential than Austin does, but it is what it is. And then the Galaxy, they're still in at the f- at the five spot, which I guess is pretty good. Nothing, nothing gained, nothing lost, as my mom once said. But I digress. All right, but that's that for the for the MLS portion of the show. Jumping over to a little NWSL. So for the NWSL, we had the we had Wave FC and. Uh, and Angel City back in action. So this past Friday, remember when I told you that Bay FC was an expansion team and they were not one of the better expansion teams as they had two, they were two and seven. Well, two, zero and seven for that matter. Well, San Diego unfortunately did not get the memo as they wound up losing to Bay FC two to one, which is absolutely disappointing. The sad thing is, is that Wave FC actually got off to such a good start as Kira Carusa scored in the 23rd minute to give San Diego a 1-0 lead, and that was the halftime score. But in the 55th minute, Bay FC Scarlett Cambero scored to make it 2-1, and then Bay FC scored off of an own goal, which I, I don't agree with the whole own goal thing, but 
Bay FC scored off of a San Diego own goal, which eventually gave Bay FC the 2-0 lead, and that eventually gave them the match. So it's another disappointing loss for San Diego. It really does not help their matters in regards to trying to climb up the ladder. So Wave FC is back in action. Well, they were actually back in action Thursday against another opponent, but that's for a little bit later. As for Angel City, their last matchup... Uh, when I did SoCal, was against the Washington Spirit. Yes, the Washington Spirit. And this one was kind of a high-scoring affair. So, in the, fir- in, the f- in the ninth minute, Washington scored off of a goal from Southern California native Trinity Rodman. Yes, Trinity Rodman. If you don't know who Trinity Rodman is, she is the daughter of Dennis Rodman and the older sister? I, th- I think she's the older sister. Older sister of uh, DJ Rodman, or Dennis Jr., who played at Washington State and USC. But uh, Trinity Rodman scored in the ninth minute for the Washington Spirit to give Washington a one nothing lead. Then in the 20th minute, Angel City scored off of an own goal from the Washington Spirit. And then three minutes after that, Sid- Sidney LaRoe scored for Angel City to put them up 2-1, to- to which it was looking really good. And then in the 30th minute, seven minutes after LaRoe's goal... Rodman scored at the 30th minute to tie the match up at 2-2. So there was a lot of scoring going on in the first half. And then four minutes after Rodman's goal, Casey Kruger scored to put the Washington Spirit up 3-2. And then two minutes after Kruger's goal, Olea, Olemata Saar scored for the Spirit to put them up 4-2. And that was pretty much the game right there, which... Eventually, the Spirit wound up winning 4-2, to two, which was extremely disappointing. But if I recall correctly, the Spirit are... Yes, the Washington Spirit are one of the top teams in the league. Which I think is pretty darn impressive, if you ask me. So, both teams wound up losing. The two teams actually faced each other on Thursday at BMO Stadium. And eventually, that was played to a 0-0 draw. So, yeah, kind of an interesting... Interesting situation for both those teams, as there was actually a, an opportunity for, I think, Angel City to score, or this, no, it was San Diego to score, as there was a bun, it, there was a pinball play where the ball was pinballed off of multiple players, and San Diego had a chance to score, but unfortunately on that attempt, it just couldn't go down. So, sadly, that was how San Diego Wave FC and Angel City wound up playing to a 0-0 tie. So as for Angel City, they are back in action, not this Saturday, and not next Saturday, but on June 8th when they head down to the Big Apple, or joy to take on New York slash New Jersey Gotham FC. Yes, that is the correct vernacular. So yeah, June 8th, Angel City is back in action when they hit the road to take on the New York slash New Jersey Gotham FC. And then as for Wave FC, they are back in action also in June, on June 7th, a Friday, when they host Orlando, which is one of the more hotter teams, as if I, they've, if I recall correctly, they've won, I think, five in a row, if not six. No, make it seven in a row. So Orlando actually started off with three draws, and then they wound up winning their last seven straight, so... It's going to be really tough sledding for Wave FC. So I'm hoping Wave FC can pull out a nice little upset win. So there's that right there for the NWSL portion of this show. So, yeah, and that'll do it right there. Um, let's talk a little WNBA, and let's have a little story time with Tarrant. So last that we talked when it came to the Sparks, they lost their season opener, but they were... They got a chance to play the Las Vegas Aces on the road, but unfortunately they lost 89-82, to which is unfortunate, as Derek Ahami had a big old 29 points along with 9 rebounds, which I think was pretty impressive if you ask me. It's great to see that she's actually playing really good. Also leading the Sparks was Lexi Brown, who had 16 points, and then Kia Nurse added 13 points, and then off the bench... Rikia Jackson added 13 points as well, but unfortunately it was just not enough as the Aces just continued to have 
a big thorn in the spark side as Aja Wilson Aja Wilson yeah Aja Wilson and Jackie Young both led the Aces with 22 points so that was just unfortunate but this game oh man I wish I could have gone to this game and I actually really want to go to the sports media or sports business sports I think it's it was called the sports media sports business um expo yeah the sports business expo and it featured like many teams from the southern california area like the ontario rain the la sparks the los angeles angels of anaheim the anaheim ducks angel city fc i and so on and so forth i think ucla was also there as well but if you were all to also but if you were to purchase a ticket to the sports business expo at long beach state you'll also get a free ticket to the to the los angeles sparks versus washington mystics game and this was on last tuesday and i said i had plans on attending but unfortunately i just could not i just couldn't go unfortunately just because i was busy that day and also i just was financially strapped so it is what it is i don't think it would have been right for me just because it's it's, i'm not trying to be a part of sports business i'm trying to be a part of sports media but nothing gained nothing lost and also it would have been a little bit of a hassle trying to get home after the game as well especially since if you all know i take the bus to get around or i sometimes walk and I don't want to be walking in, at, at night in the city of Long Beach, but I digress. Anyway, so for the game between the Sparks and the Mystics, this was actually a very good game, and it came down to the wire. The Sparks were had to actually come make a comeback as they were down four at halftime, and then they tied it up after three quarters, which was great. And then the Sparks eventually led, they led wire to wire for the most part in the fourth quarter, but they just could not put the Mystics away as the Mystics were doing all they can and the, all that they can to win and the Sparks were doing all that they can to try to spoon feed the win to the Mystics. But thankfully, with about five-ish seconds left, the Mystics had the ball and they were ready to drive the paint for to send it into overtime for a layup. But Cameron Brink, the Sparks' number two overall pick, from this year's draft. She came up with the game-winning block, and eventually the Sparks were able to notch their first win of the season, winning 70-68. to Apparently this was televised on M- MSN? I think, yeah, yeah, Mystic Sports Network. Yeah, Mystic Sports Network, so... But it was, but it did take place at Long Beach State, or the Walter Pyramid, so there you have it right there. Anyway, so for the Sparks, they were led by Lexi Brown, who had 20 points. And then Derek Hammy added 17 points and 18 rebounds. Kia Nurse added 13 points. And then Cameron Brink, although she had only 4 points, she did add 8 rebounds. And her only 2 field goals were basically the... the her 2 field goals were basically what led her to shooting 100% from the field. And she also had three assists. And, again, she came up with the big game-clinching block, which I thought was amazing right there. And Rakia Jackson added nine points off the bench as well. So, for the Sparks, that's a good win. It's always good to notch your first win of the season, albeit it was a pretty ugly win, but winning ugly is better than losing pretty. So, Sparks are back in action tonight when they host the Indiana Fever, who have yet to to notch a win this season. That will be taking place at Crypto.com Arena. So, I imagine the Sparks are done playing at uh, Long Beach State, unless the Crypto.com Arena is being used again. Yeah, it looks like the Sparks are playing at Crypto.com going forward, which... Crypto.com Arena, which I think is great. Or as the old... Or as everyone likes to call it, the... The uh, Staples Center, because it will forever be Staples Center. I don't care what anyone says. So, unless states stated otherwise, the Sparks should be back at Crypto.com Arena. They should not be playing their matches at the Walter Pyramid in Long Beach. All right, but that is that for the Sparks. Good job to the Sparks on getting their first win of the season, and great job to Cameron Brink for coming up with the match-clinching block. All right, let's talk a little college softball as... 
UCLA is the only remaining team in the NCAA softball tournament. So for UCLA, they actually won the Pac-12 tournament, and they're the only, and like I mentioned, they're the only SoCal team remaining as they managed to beat Arizona State in the Pac-12 tournament as well as Arizona, and then they also beat Utah in this championship match, which I think was great. And then the NCAA regionals. Remember how UCLA got dismissed against Grand Canyon last year early in the regionals? Well, UCLA had the honor of drawing Grand Canyon again, but unlike last year, UCLA was able to take down Grand Canyon 9 0 in five innings. And they also took down Virginia Tech in a thriller, winning 7 6 the day after that, which I thought was pretty good. And then on Sunday, UCLA took on Grand Canyon again and. The Bruins took down the Lopes 9-1 to in five innings, advancing to the NCAA Super Regionals, or the Sweet 16, as UCLA took on Georgia yesterday, being Thursday, and UCLA wound up shutting out Georgia 8 nothing in six innings, which I think is pretty darn impressive, because UCLA actually played Georgia earlier this season, and they wound up losing 7-2, to but it was played in Clearwater, Florida, so... I don't know if UCLA had a lot of familiarity, or maybe they didn't have their entire roster, but regardless, it still is a good win for UCLA, and UCLA is one win away from advancing out of the Super Regionals, as UCLA plays Georgia tonight at 7 p.m. It's going to be on ESPN2, mind you. It's going to be in Easton Stadium in Los Angeles, California. So, for the Bruins, I'm glad to see that they're not getting one and done or two and done like they did last year in the postseason. Like, that was just bad, dude. I'm sorry, but that was just absolutely bad that they unfortunately wound up losing in the first round. I think they were like the number two overall seed, and then they wound up losing their first regional match, and then they wound up losing their second one. They were seeded pretty high, that's for sure. I think they were like top 10 seed, and then they failed to win one game. So, glad to see UCLA is not having any boo-boos like they did last year. And I'm glad to see they're actually putting base runners, they're actually scoring runs and whatnot, and the bats have woken up. So, and and their pitching is pretty good, which is more than I can say for the Angels. (laughs) I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, um, regardless, UCLA softball, we have your support or at least I do. I'm hoping that they can continue to uh, do great things. Unfortunately, San Diego State got bounced, and Cal State Fullerton almost made it to the Super Regionals, but they fell one game short as they wound up losing to Stanford 6-2, to two, I think. Regardless, they lost in a win-or-go-home game, which it would have been great to see Cal State Fullerton advance just because Stanford was the number eight overall seed, and it's always good to see like mid major, or I think it's like mid major conferences advance to advance through to the NCAA tournament in regards to the postseason. And that would have been such a massive upset, and it also would have been great for SoCal, but unfortunately, oh, poor Cal State Fullerton, they wound up falling short. But honestly, that's still a pretty impressive season from Cal State Fullerton, or the Lady Titans. So. Great job to Cal State Fullerton. You have my respect, and hopefully they can have another deep run to come in the future. All right, that's that for UCLA softball right there. I just wanted to get that out of the way and uh, keep it moving along. It's only a matter of time before my guest calls me, which should be soon. So let's discuss a little bit of some MLB. As the Dodgers continue to keep it moving, they keep continue to keep on rolling. As they last time we t- chatted about them, we were talking about how they pretty much lost one. Well, they took down the Giants three out of four, but they took on the Cincinnati Reds on uh, last weekend, ranging from last Thursday all the way through last Sunday. So Thursday, the Dodgers wound up losing to the Reds 7-2, which was a bummer. But Friday, the Dodgers wound up taking down the Reds 7-3. And then Saturday, the Dodgers shut out the Reds 4-0 as they limited the Reds to only three hits. And then Sunday was actually a remarkable, remarkable game as the Dodgers wound up winning 3-2 in 10 innings as Shohei Otani delivered a walk-off single in the 10th inning to get his first walk-off win as a Los Angeles Dodger. So, congratulations to Shohei Otani. I'm glad he's 
worth the money that the Dodgers paid him so much for. And then this past Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the Dodgers had a little bit of a rough sled against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, I still get the creeps after what happened last year. So the Dodgers wound up beating the Diamondbacks in the first game 6-4, to four, but wound up losing to the Dodgers on Tuesday 7-3. to three. And Then the rubber match, the Diamondbacks took down the Dodgers 6 nothing. as even though the Dodgers had six hits, they just could not get any runs to be scored. So the Dodgers had a little bit of a tough one against Arizona, but the Diamondbacks are improved as starting tonight and going all the way through Sunday, the Dodgers are on the road as they take on the Cincinnati Reds. So it's another series against the Reds. This time it's in Cincinnati, and it, it, and it's a three-game series, and tonight's game starts at 4.10 p.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow's game will be on Fox, and it'll start at 4.15 p.m. And then Sunday, the final or the final match or the final matchup or the final game will be at 10 40 a.m pacific time then monday tuesday and wednesday the dodgers will head to the big apple to take on those new york mets and then next friday saturday and sunday the dodgers host the colorado rockies so looking at where the dodgers stand they stand at still are in first place in the NL West, which I think is pretty darn good if you ask me. They're still probably the second, or actually not the second best, the fourth best team in the league overall behind the, behind the Cleveland Guardians, the New York Yankees, and the Philadelphia Phillies. So there you have it regarding the Dodgers. Now for the Dodgers' little brother, the San Diego Padres. So... This actually happened, so they, leaving off when I was talking about them, they actually were taking on the the uh, Atlanta Braves in a big series, and they actually did pretty good against the Braves. They actually wound up winning three out of four. So game one on last Friday, that was actually won by the Padres, winning it three to one, which I think was pretty darn good. 13 hits is pretty solid, even though they only drove in three runs. And then they, and then Saturday, there was, it was actually postponed, so unfortunately... Saturday's game against the Braves was postponed. That actually got made up on Sunday, so I imagine there was uh, they still managed to have ES uh, Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, and then they managed to make up the other game later on, which I'll be getting into in a little bit. But the Padres did not disappoint on national TV as they wound up winning nine to one over the Braves holding them to just one run and only four hits while supplying 14 hits of their own. Then there was a double header. So if you remember the Do- the, the Padres actually had they actually had a four game series which ran from Friday of last week all the way to Monday of this week. And but in, but because of the rain on Saturday or the bad weather the Padres and Braves played a doubleheader on Monday. So the first game of the doubleheader, the Padres were able to eke out a win over the Atlanta Braves, winning 6-5. to five. They actually were down 5 five nothing at one point. And then the fifth inning is when they kind of caught fire, or they kind of skin, they kind of lit up the fire. And then the seventh inning, they got one run. And then the eighth inning, they really came alive. This is despite getting out hit by the Braves, mind you. And then the second game, unfortunately, the Padres were just not as lucky as they wound up losing 3 nothing. as even though the Padres wound up salvaging seven hits, it was just, just to no avail. But three out of four is not bad at all. So great series for the for the Padres as they also took down the Padres, or the Padres also took down the Reds two times out of three. Tuesday, the Padres lost to Cincinnati 2 nothing, but wound up winning on Wednesday and Thursday by scores of 7 to 3 and 6 to 4 with the 6 to 4 game being won in extra innings. So tonight, Saturday and Sunday, the Padres host the New York Yankees and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Padres host the Miami Marlins and then next Friday, Saturday and Sunday, the Padres hit the road to Patrick Mahomes land and take on the Kansas City Royals. So pretty solid week for the for the Padres if you ask me. And they actually are above 500. So the Dodgers are no longer the only team above 500 in the NL West. 
But the Dodgers just have to be aware of some shark-infested waters in that NFC and NL West, just because the Diamondbacks are still, I don't want to say they're hot on their tail, but they're still kind of up there. The Padres are still only six and a half back, and the Giants might be getting hot a little bit, but we'll see. And then as for the lowly Angels, who are tied for last in the AL West, and unfortunately, I hate to tell you all this, but it's only a matter of time before the Astros are starting to catch fire there. The Astros went from last in the AL West to now being the third best team in the AL West. So as for the Angels, they wound up taking on the Texas Rangers last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they wound up taking 2 out of 3 against the World Series champion. So... Friday, the Angels wound up winning 9-3. Where's this Angels team been most of this time? And then last Saturday, oh, the Angels wound up losing a heartbreaker to the Rangers as they wound up losing 3-2 in 13 innings. And then on Sunday, the Angels took down the Rangers 4-1 in the rubber match, which I thought was a pretty good win right there. So 2-3 out of three against the reigning World Series champs, that's pretty good. And then against the Houston Trastros, I mean Astros, they actually took two out of three against the Astros too, as they wound up winning the first game 9-7. to seven. But just like the series against the Rangers, um, the Astros wound up losing 6-5, to five, which, is unfortunately, which is unfortunate, but the Angels wound up taking the rubber match against the Astros, winning that 2-1. to one. So... The Angels, after having yesterday off, they have returned home to take on the land, a.k.a. the Cleveland Guardians, on Friday, being tonight, Saturday, and Sunday. Then they have Monday off, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the Angels host the Yankees. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Angels head down to the, what is it, the Emerald City? They, They go down to the city that, that might have been eaten, might not have been eaten, Anyway, but the Angels take on the Seattle Mariners on the road next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Apparently, that's going to be on Apple TV, which I guess is cool. And it's also going to be on Fox as well. So, so at least the Angels are making some progress. They're still a ways back of the Mariners. Oh, doggone Mariners. I knew the Mariners' hot, slow start wouldn't be, wouldn't be for too long. And for it's unfortunate. It's it's all good though. We at least if the Angels can't win the AL West, they gotta at least help out my boy Drewski and the Texas Rangers. So I mean, at least if if there's one team that I would rather see the AL West be won by that's not named the Angels, I'd want to see it be won by the Rangers. Maybe the the Oakland A's. Can't I? It's gonna be even though they're NorCal, and then maybe the Mariners, just because the Mariners deserve at least some things. I mean, I, I what I've been hearing is that the Mariners, Mariners fans are actually pretty chill. I hope so. If I go to an, a Mariners Angels game, I pray to God that I don't get roughhoused or trash talked or whatnot. But I digress. But the Angels through fifty games, they are a whopping twenty and thirty, which. Again, they're still trying to figure out how to win, I guess. But that's going to basically do it for the Angels portion of the show. We're actually going to take ourselves a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'm going to be bringing on my guest to talk a little bit of the Rams schedule. We might not have enough time to go over the Chargers, and I don't think my brother, my guest wants to go over the, uh, the Chargers schedule. But we're going to be going over the Rams schedule, and then we'll also discuss some possible coaching hires that the Lakers should make. So keep it locked here. You are listening to the SoCal Supreme Sports Show here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that sports. We'll be right back after this. What's up, sports fans? You're listening to IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your favorite West Coast Wisconsinite, Bernie Bango. And if you're a cheesehead, come listen to my show, Big Cheese Sports where we road trip around America's Dairyland, previewing, reviewing, predicting, debating, and digging into all that is Wisconsin sports at the college and pro levels. Join me on IE Sports Radio, Sundays at 1 p.m. Central Standard. Bernie out.
What's good, everyone? It's Drosky, the host of Part of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. On this station, we cover everything in the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas area. From where we cover the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Stars, Dallas Mavericks, Dallas Wings, Texas Rangers, TCU, SMU, we cover it all right here every Wednesdays from 9 to 10 p.m. Central Time. Make sure you stay live with me on the Heart of Texas Sports on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports fans, are you looking for a sports show that maybe isn't 100% about sports? Then you might want to check out the Sports Couple Perspectives right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Most sports shows cover only scores and stats, and while we're not opposed to that, we dig a little deeper into sports issues and some of the hottest topics in athletics. In addition to sports, we take a journey through my neck of the woods, pop culture, with movie reviews of both sports and non-sports films. Speaking of pop culture, make sure to participate in our game nights, where we quiz each other on our specialties, and you, the listeners, can win IE Sports Radio apparel. We always have a great time learning more about each other's worlds, one show at a time. So join us each week on the Sports Couple Perspectives, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directory for all that is sports. And welcome back to the second half of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that sports. Definitely check out the Sports Couple Perspective with Larry B. and Cecilia B. That will be coming on in approximately 57 minutes from now as of this recording. But we're going to discuss a little bit of some Charger schedule and then my guest will be coming on to help me break down the Rams schedule and talk a little bit of Lakers on who they're who they should hire as head coach, I I shouldn't be too long though. My goal is to keep SoCal under ninety minutes, maybe even eighty minutes. So well, even though I don't think I did that last week, but that was an exception. Anyway, so let's discuss a little bit of the Charger schedule. So I already skimmed through the Charger schedule last week, but week one they've got yeah. Raiders! And it seems like they have a lot of success against the Raiders at SoFi. So this will be a home game, and the fact that we're getting we're getting a rivalry game is pretty is pretty good if you ask me. So Adam Karnick, Mike Pat, Marcus Lowscrit, and Larry B all popped into the chat room. Good evening slash afternoon to you all. Hope you're all doing well. But Week one against the Raiders. I'm not going to try to predict these right away, but I'm going to basically just speculate when it comes to to each matchup. I will just say for the Raiders Chargers matchup in week one, this is going to be a fascinating matchup. I would not be surprised if the Chargers wound up winning, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they wound up losing. The Raiders have so much upside from last season as they got their guy in Antonio Pierce. They're rolling with Aiden O'Connell and what and whatnot. And when it comes to rivalry games, throw out the records, all bets are off, etc., etc. So I think it's going to be a very good matchup right there. And I, you can't really predict what's going to happen because the last time those two teams played, well, it was completely ugly as the Chargers didn't have Justin Herbert and it was a thumping. So I'm expecting a barn burner from week one. Week two is the Carolina Panthers in Carolina. Now, this one looks like an, an easy game on paper, but this is, seems like a this seems like a game that the Chargers would probably lose just because the Chargers, more often than not, they always, for some weird reason, struggle 
Oh, Adam thinks he's so smart. So smart and so funny. He says, I predict the Chargers and Raiders will tie. Oh, God. Don't remind me of that one, of that game from a couple seasons ago. Just please don't, Adam. I'm sorry, three seasons ago. But, oh, my guest is ready. So, um, I guess we are just going to skip the Chargers schedule for this week as my guest is actually ready. But uh, for the Panthers-Chargers game, I will say... um, I th- I just think that's going it's going to be a interesting game. I imagine it's going to be on the low scoring side. So there you have it. And then the Steelers one that is kind of going. I think that's going to be a coin flip right there. I think Steelers Chargers is going to be a massive coin flip. The Chargers could easily go three and zero in their in those first three games, but they could also probably go zero and three. And if that happens, well, their ship their ship is pretty much sunk at that point because week four they've got the Chiefs at home, and Patrick Mahomes has always had the answer for the Chargers, unless of course the Chargers just come out with a lot of fire. But Mahomes doesn't lose too many road games to AFC West opponents. I think the only I think he recently just lost to the Broncos which eventually was the first time Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs wound up losing to an AFC or yeah, an AFC West opponent at home or or on the road. Week 5 is the bye which I don't like. Week 6 is at Denver. So the Chargers to me, that has been their Achilles heel playing at Mile High Stadium. I hope the Chargers can find some way to win just because they're probably going to be playing a rookie quarterback in Bo Nix if not the Broncos, for some weird reason, could be playing Zach Wilson. If they play Zach Wilson, awesome. But I would not mind them playing. But I, I, it's going to be interesting playing Bo Nix. It's going to be Oregon quarterback versus Oregon quarterback. The difference is, is that Justin Herbert stayed at Oregon and he didn't bounce around to like 50,000 other schools. And then the Chargers will get their first primetime game in Week 7 when they take on the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona on Monday Night Football, which will be on October 21st. Expect me not to do set point at the standard time, just because. Yeah, 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 Adam, that that is an early buy, and the Rams buy is actually the week after the Chargers. Then week eight is the Drew Brees matchup, a.k.a. the New Orleans Saints. That one is going to be an interesting game. That could be the Derek... That's going to be the Derek Carr matchup, just because... We could be seeing Khalil Mack feast all over Derek Carr, or we could also see the Chargers get shredded by Derek Carr. But regardless, that New Orleans Saints matchup is so interesting on paper. I think the Chargers could win that one, but at the same time, it's just so... It depends on it depends on which defense shows up. Then Week 9, the... Chargers hit the road to Cleveland to take on the Browns. Long story short, expect a high-scoring affair. Take the over, unless it's like 100. Just take the over. Don't ask questions. The last two meetings between the Browns and the Chargers have been high-scoring affairs. Just take the over. Gamble responsibly. Then in Week 10, the Chargers host the Titans. Chargers should win that one. I mean, no more Derrick Henry and Will Levis... What is he can't possibly be a threat to the Chargers that much? I mean, maybe D Hop as well, but I, I don't know. Like the Chargers have a fairly fairly favorable schedule starting off. I can only see like maybe one two losses in their first ten weeks. Then in week eleven, it starts to get really tough. They take on the Cincinnati Bengals, or they host the Cincinnati Bengals. That's going to be a real tough one. Even though the Chargers are undefeated against Joe Burrow. Getting Joe Burrow healthy with Jamar Chase, that's going to be a tough one. And the Chargers don't really have the best corners, especially since most of them have left via free agency. But I digress. Then Week 12, the Chargers have another primetime matchup. They get to host the Baltimore Ravens in the Harbaugh versus Harbaugh matchup, which I think is going to be very cool. Then Week 13... The Chargers, oh man, this is going to be the Misery Loves Company matchup. The Chargers hit the road to Magic City to take on the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> I, that's based, Lots of tears will be shed in that matchup, I guarantee you. And one team could will probably choke the lead against the other. But I digress. Then week 14, the Chargers head down to Arrowhead to take on the Chiefs for Sunday Night Football. Uh, I really think the Chargers can maybe win that matchup. I mean... 
it seems like the Chargers always are close the second go around against the Chiefs, but close doesn't really cut it. And in week 15, the Chargers are home against the Bucks. On paper, that looks like it's going to be a tough matchup for the Chargers. Now, but at the same time, I will just say the Chargers uh, have actually had lots of success against Baker Mayfield. So I feel the Chargers could win that matchup by some sort of miracle, but they could also lose that one via high-scoring affair. I mean, Baker Mayfield does have a good amount of weapons like Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. So... We'll see what happens. Then in week 16, the Chargers host the Broncos. Again, expect the the battle of the Oregon QBs and Bo Nix versus Justin Herbert. Though I think Bo Nix should have pretty much... He should pretty much have the experience and the his sea legs underneath his feet or his cleats and whatnot. Then in week 17, the Chargers... The week 17 and 18 are away games. The 17... The Chargers are on the road against the Patriots, which they actually wound up winning in uh, Foxborough for the first time since, I think, 2004 when they had Marcellus Wiley. Yeah, it's been that long since the Chargers wound up beating the Patriots in New England. And then eight, week 18, the Chargers hit the road to Allegiant Stadium to take on the yeah, Raiders, which... Man, that's going to be a tough... That I, I'm already expecting the Chargers to have a tough time. So, the Chargers better have a playoff spot clinched by the time that Week 18 hits. Just because they do not want to bank on winning an, a win-or-go-home game. Which, if that happens, I can already tell that that's going to be a... It's going to be detrimental for them. But that's the Chargers schedule right there. I think once OTAs and uh, training camp is over, then I'll make my Chargers prediction. And I guess, like, maybe preseason as well. All right, but now it is time to bring on my guest. So without any further delay, let us bring him on. As we all know, he is my brother from the same mother. And he is a recent guest. Without any further delay, please welcome in my brother from the same mother, Justin Rodriguez, how you doing, Justin? Uh, I'm do- I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you're 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 a little faint, but I can hear you. Oh, my bad. But I'm glad to have you back on, Justin. It really means a lot that you are here. And I already discussed the the uh, Chargers uh, the uh, Chargers schedule. So my apologies for being behind. But let's actually break down the Rams schedule. So. Justin, week one, the Rams take on the Lions. What are you looking forward to when it comes to that? Yeah, yeah if you give me one sec, I, yeah, I'm just pulling up the Rams schedule uh, right now. But, yes, the, the, uh, the Rams are taking on uh, the Lions in week one. No surprise there. Um, yeah, they, they ended their season with, uh, unfortunately, a loss to the uh, – uh, you know, to the Detroit Lions, um, but I'm I'm cur- But I mean, over overall, I'm, I'm I'm curious to see, you know, how the Rams uh, pick up from where where they left off at the end of last season um, in the playoffs and and, and, into, and into the playoffs, I should say. Like, um, you know, they. I mean, they they. they their offensive line, uh, or their offense, I should say, um, you know, has a really pr- uh, promising future, at least at least in the short term. I mean, we'll see how long Matthew Stafford, uh, you know, um, you know, remains a Los Angeles Ram. But but um, but I mean, he, at least he's got a a, a good uh, new offensive weapon with Puka Nakua. You know the the only thing I'm really worried about is how, how their defense is going to hold up. And we talked about this off the air, but um, you know now that now that Aaron Donald's gone, you know, those are big shoes to fill. Like like you know who's going to step up and be the you know defensive leader for the L.A. Rams? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be tough to basically f- f- fulfill that role. And it's going to take time for the Rams. I don't expect the Rams to basically have that role filled in 
right away, but I think there, it's going to take time. And then week two, the the Rams head down to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. The Cardinals are improved, but for me, I think the Rams should pull out the win. I'm not trying to predict early an early season win-loss record right away, but the Cardinals, I think, will have some growing pains early on, but I think they should... I think the Rams should be able to win. And then week three, the Rams have the Niners. Now, last time these two teams met at SoFi, I think it was SoFi, the Rams wound up winning, even though it was the battle of the backup. So what do you think? The, the Rams have a chance against the Niners this season, even though there's no Aaron Donald? Uh, well, first of all, to, to, before I answer that question, to correct you, that game was actually in San Francisco, the oh, final game of the season where, where, the, where the Rams and, um, ended up pull, pull, pulling it out, like you said, without, without star players on either side. Um, but, uh, I mean, the, the Niners should be favored to, to win, to win the division. Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, I hope the, the Rams. Uh, of course, of course, I hope the Rams win. Um, you know, but I mean, I mean, at this point, you know, with the exception of that one game, where you know where, where we won without any any of our you know any of our guys really. I, I, don't, I don't even remember. I, I, I forgot who the quarterback was. Carson uh, Wentz. Carson Wentz. That's right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yes. Um. So I mean, I already. I, I, unfortunately, I just expect the, the the Rams to lose to San Francisco because we lost to them what nine times in a row in the regular season. Yep. Um. And, and I mean, you, you know, the, the the Niners for the most part are going to be are going to be back. I mean, I think I think Brock Purdy proved that he's for real. Mm-hmm. He did indeed, and yeah, it will be tough sledding when it comes to that. But um, week four, the the Bears pl- or the the Rams play the Bears in Chicago. That's going to be an interesting matchup with Caleb Williams at the helm. And then October sixth, that'll be that's week five. That'll be this is. I'm so glad this matchup is going to be at SoFi Stadium. So the Rams host the Green Bay Packers, and I will just say mm-hmm. the the Rams struggle in Lambeau Field when they play the Packers. I really hope this whole change of scenery is going to be something better for the Rams because after the uh, Packers game, they've got the bye week. But uh, do you think the Rams have a shot against the Packers not in Lambeau Field but in SoFi Stadium? I think they have a shot. But the Packers are really good. I mean, they, they they showed that they could. I mean, look what they did did in here in Dallas last year. You know, in the playoffs, they show they've shown that they they could come into any um, you know opposing team's uh, you know field and steal a game when it you know when they need to. So again, it's really tough. It's really tough to say what you, where the Rams are going. Are going to be. Uh, I don't really. I think they'll make the playoffs, but but I think I think they're going to be one of those like middle of the pack teams in the in the NF in the NFC. I I got them. I got to make. I got them going ten and seven, um, and making the wild card again. Hmm. Good early prediction right there. I think ten and seven sounds respectable. If not, maybe eleven and six. So, yeah, that's what I had too. Like, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, you know, I mean, like when I say ten and seven, I'm even counting, like, you know, say, you know, like if they if they have a clunker game, like if they if they for whatever reason struggle and lose at Chicago, or say, uh, you know, you know, you know, uh, they, they, you know, they, they lose they lose in New Orleans or. Or, or, or whatever. Like even if they have a clunker or two, I, I could still see them, you know, you know, being being an above five hundred team and making the playoffs. I do too. So week six is their bye week, and then 
on October 20th, which will be week number seven, they will be hosting... <clears throat> yeah, Raiders! As Chris Berman would say. But then after that... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have to do it in that voice. I have to do it in the Chris Berman voice. But after <laughs> the Raiders, they have another primetime game as they host the Minnesota Vikings. Now, the Vikings are going to be a whole different team. They have J.J. McCarthy as their quarterback, but they still have one of the top... Um, r- wide receivers in the game in Justin Jefferson. So, do you think the, the Rams can pull off that win in prime time? I've got them winning that game. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they, the, the you know the Rams play, play the have Vi- played the Vikings pretty well over the last few years. Um, say, and and and, they'll, and, they'll, and that game will be at home. So, so yeah, I've, I've got them winning that game. Huh? And the best part for the Rams is that in their week seven, week eight tilt is that they don't have to leave to travel. If they had to travel or go from one city to another, then that would be a little t- bit of tough sledding. But honestly, I'm glad the Rams, they don't even have to leave in their week after their week se- seven game. Or not week seven game, their week five game. So heading down to... I'm stuck. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, you, you, you may have talked about this already when you went over the charter schedule. But I mean, where, where, where do you do you see the Raiders going anywhere this year? I mean, they don't even have a quarterback. I think they do. I mean, Aiden O'Connell does have a year under his belt. But my thing is, well, is I that- can tell you from listening to Mason and Ireland, and there, there's no bigger Raiders fan I personally know than John Ireland. He, you know, he. He is he is walking the plank if not jumped ship, you know, off the Raiders because they because they they just they, they he, he just he just doesn't think that they're they're off the offensive side of the ball is really organized. He has he has no he has no faith in their quarterback, um, you, you, you know, and uh, he 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 feels like the Chargers are are going to have a year. I, th- I I think he thinks the Chargers are going to make the playoffs. So. I think that's a debate. I think it's a pretty good theory, and the Chargers to me are kind of like that Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde team. Sometimes, sometimes the Chargers can be good when no one expects them to, but they could also be bad when everyone expects them to be good. So, yeah, well, well, hope, hopefully, hopefully, you know, with a new, with a new, more experienced coach and Jim Harbaugh and his staff, like you know, he can he can correct some of those, um, yeah. Um, uh, Jekyll, as you say, Jekyll and Hyde type of uh, um, tendencies that the Chargers have. Mm -hmm. And he brought in most of his uh, staff as well from Michigan. But uh, to keep it moving, uh, we have Week 9 with the Seattle Seahawks on the road. But Week 10... That's gonna. This one's gonna be a real good one. The Rams will be hosting the Miami Dolphins in Tua Tonga Viola, as well as Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. That's gonna be on Monday Night Football. So I don't know if I have plans on when it comes to that. When it comes to watching that game, but I'm certain you're going to be watching that one for sure. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely watch. You know, again, because I don't live in the LA market, and I, I refuse to pay for NBA league pass. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, NFL Sunday ticket, I should say. Um, uh, you know, especially with the with the new YouTube deal, like you know, like I, I can only watch so many Rams games on TV. So anytime the Rams are on TV, you know, are on a a nationally televised game. I'm I'm there. Um, yeah, I mean it's going to be really interesting to see. You know, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Tua had a pretty good good year in spite of in spite of those of those injuries, those terrible injuries he, he, he suffered a couple of years ago. So uh, I, so I think. You know, I mean, I, 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 unfortunately, I have that one pegged as one of their losses, even though it's out of SoFi. I mean, again, I, I just have to see what, you know, what what the Rams are, what the Rams are like. I mean, again, I, I have, I have faith in their offense, um, but you know, it's going to be, it's going to, it's really going to, 
it's really going to come down to how well they play defense. Yeah, the Rams are going to have one of the younger defenses out there, but it's all about time and basically learning as learning and going with the flow and whatnot. All right, so after mm-hmm. the Dolphins game, the the Rams do travel to Foxborough to take on the New England Patriots. Let's be real. The, the Patriots are not the Patriots like when they won the Super Bowl a few years ago. Oh, oh are you kidding me? Like, the, is, is anybody even there anymore? You know, since, 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 Belichick's, since Belichick's gone? Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, in, a, they're in a total rebuild, though. That, that, should, that should definitely be an easy win. Yes, even though it's any given Sunday, but I, I totally agree. I think that should be a win. And then November 24th, this one's going to be a little bit of a tougher one. The Rams host the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday Night Football. So, I don't know about you, but this one could be a 50-50 one if if the Eagles can, to me, they're kind of like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde team, especially from the postseason. So, what do you think? Do you think the Eagles have a shot, or do you think the Rams win that one? Well, well, I mean, the Eagles are the are, are, when healthy are the are the best team in the NFC. So, I mean, they should they should te- definitely be favored. Um, but you know, the games at home, I've got. I mean, so far after their bye week, I've I've got them going uh, undefeated. You know, Raiders, Vikings, Seahawks. Uh, well, well, actually, no, 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 I take that back. I, I had them lose to the Dolphins. But if they do pull out a win against the Dolphins and they get a streak going, um, yeah, I, I could see them maybe pulling off an upset there. Yeah, and honestly, the Eagles are not indestructible. I mean, it, they just had a major collapse late in the season. I don't know how and I don't know why. But I feel the Eagles are Yeah, that's very true. Good. Yeah, yeah. And then after after week 12, the Rams will play the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans on December 1st. I can already hear the anger and frustration from Saints fans when it comes to seeing the Rams because of that whole no-call pass interference thing. But, well, ever since then, the, the, the Saints have played the Rams, you know, pr- pretty well. Um, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, the Saints are just, are just one of those teams. I mean, they're, they're not really that good, but for, for whatever reason, you know, the Rams, the Rams struggle against them. So, so uh, you know, yeah, that that one I've got. I mean, if they're if they're due for a loss, it would definitely be it would definitely be that one. It would definitely be that game. Excuse me, if not, if not for sure, you know against the Buffalo Bills. And that's the perfect segue to go into the next game. Buffalo, that yeah. one is going to be a whole lot tougher. Now, I know Stephon Diggs left to go to the Houston Texans, but I really think that's going to be a little bit of a barn burner. I mean, Buffalo isn't... Oh, oh speaking of which, our Buffalo our Buffalo host of the Buffalo Huddle, Patty Vax, just popped in. She said she made it. We're actually talking about the Buffalo Bills. I mean, the Bills, to me, Josh Allen is a special quarterback. My only thing is, is that he's playing such a young defense. He's, and that's kind of my thing right there. So, if anything, I would expect that to be a high-scoring affair. And then after that is the road game, round two against the San Francisco 49ers. The good thing is for the for the Rams is that they don't have to leave California. The bad news is is that they're on the road in Santa Clara on Thursday night football. It's a massive turnaround. So this one could be rather interesting, if you ask me. But I, I if I if I had to pick a clunker, that would probably be those ones against the Niners, unless the Niners will be bound to rest starters. But we'll see. <laughs> What do you think about that second and final primetime matchup? Against the 49ers, yeah. you mean? Yeah, that would be in week 15. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think it really dep- depends on where those teams are at at that point when it comes to their records and stuff. I mean, I'm looking at San Francisco's schedule. They they definitely have a more favorable schedule than the, than the, than the Rams do. Um, 
you, you know, so, uh, so, so, um, I mean, if they have nothing to play for, I could see the Rams stealing one again, but I mean, if there is something to play for, like if the division's on the line, then, then San Francisco should be favored, especially when, if it's in their building. Yeah, at, at that point, I, I highly doubt the Niners will have clinched. They, they might have clinched a playoff berth by then, but I think that could be for the division for them, if not maybe the number one seed. But after the Niners, or after the Niners game in Week 16, the Rams head down to MetLife Stadium to take the number one overall. I'm sorry, the number one overall seed yeah. in the conference. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, number one overall seed in the yeah, that's a good point. But in Week 16, the Rams head down to MetLife Stadium to take on those Jets, Jets, mm-hmm. which it, I mean. This one's going to be another interesting one, depending on if Aaron Rodgers is healthy and if the Rams' defense really bold. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the wild one. That's the X factor right there. Can Aaron Rodgers hold up? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and even if he doesn't get hurt, will he be the same Aaron Rodgers? That is very true. And will the Rams' defense step up to the plate? That's the big one right there. And then the last two games are against con or, or not conference foes against division foes, and they're both at home. So week seventeen is against the Cardinals, and week eighteen is against the Seahawks. Do you think the Cardinals and Seahawks pose a threat to the Rams, or do you think the Rams have their should have their number this season? We, we've had we've had their number for a while. Yeah, yeah. So. Um... At least for the Cardinals. Yeah, I mean Seattle, Seattle got a little better, but we but we we own both teams. I mean the the, the only team yeah the only team we have to fear in our division is uh, you know those those San Francisco 49ers. Yep, and Marcus Los Great, who is the host of our combat sports show, gloves off. He says we own the Rams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's do you want to? Shall we bring up? Uh, the playoff, the NFC Championship from two years ago. No, no, no. I'm kidding. I but, thought Marcos was great. Was a Bostonian guy. He, no, 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 no. His, his team. He likes the Celtics as well as the Warriors, but his NFL team is the uh, the Niners. Oh, so he's a Bay Area guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For the most part, but that's the Rams' season schedule. So i will remember that that you have the uh rams going 10 and 7 this season which you're welcome to change it if you want but i'll make my prediction sometime down the road just just until like after training camp is done and maybe preseason is done to see where everyone's at yeah i feel pretty good about 10 and 7 yeah and i feel good about the rams overall i think this is a prom this could be a promising season for them Will they make the Super Bowl? That's going to depend on if the Rams play their cards right. Just because the whole superstition thing, I want to believe it just because ever since they've joined L.A., they've had the pattern of missed the playoffs, made the playoffs, made the Super Bowl, and then missed the playoffs, made the playoffs, and then made the Super Bowl, and so on and so forth. And this is year nine that ever since the Rams have moved from St. Louis all the way back to L.A. So... If that trend- that's a really interesting point. I, I, did, I, I you, you brought up that pattern uh, to me the other day off the air. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't even think about that, but that's you, you know, uh, you, I mean, it's it's not it's not out of the question. Yeah, I, I still have faith in in the Rams. I, it, it, will it be a little tougher without Aaron Donald? Of course, but that's the beauty of it, and they have one of the more young wise-minded coaches out there in Sean McVay. I really think mm-hmm. he's really brought that team up, upward and onward. And keep in mind, the, his the previous seven years, the Rams did all, had all that success with Sean McVay without a first-round pick. They wound up winning 70 games. They wound up making two Super Bowls. They wound up winning a Super Bowl. Sean McVay was named Coach of the Year. And I could probably make name a bunch of more accolades. That also included probably four playoff appearances, all without a first-round pick, mind you. So that just goes to show that the Rams are doing everything right. And I think the Chargers should maybe take notes. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
But uh, before we head on out, um, we got to discuss a little bit of the NBA. So my brother, Justin, and I were talking about who the possible coach should be for the Los Angeles Lakers. And he actually had three possible nominees. So you want to explain to, to them, Justin? Well, the reports are that you know that there are three leading candidates for yeah candidates for the what's that? I said yeah candidates. I said nominees, but uh, candidates. So my bad on that. Yeah. So yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. No worries. Yeah. This is just something that I'm predicting. Yeah. This has been reported that it's you know you know JJ Redick uh, is, is the is the hot name that's being thrown around. Um, um, that that um, uh, B- Borrego guy, Steve Borrego, I think his name is uh, the assistant coach, but uh, or former assistant. Co- I, I don't know if he's still on the bench, but like I, I've never, I never even heard of the guy until you know until um, you know until the, that name was 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 being reported. But you know, yeah, Bar- yeah, Borrego from New Orleans, James Borrego, uh, James Borrego. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and, um, and Sam Cassell, uh, who is, um, is he, is he still in Portland or was he let go after Damian Lillard was traded? Uh, Sam Cassell is, that's a good question. I, 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 I've heard his name being thrown, thrown around. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I also heard that too, and uh, he's actually the an assistant coach for those. He's just coach for the Celtics. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Ugh. Yep, he's, yeah. he's an assistant coach for the Celtics, uh, which would be kind of funny if he if he wound up winning a ring and then being the head coach of the Lakers. But I digress. Adam Karnick, the host of our Chicago show, thinks he's funny. He says the Lakers candidates are LeBron James, Bronny James, and Chuck. I don't know what Chuck you're talking about, but I'm guessing like Chuck Charles Barkley or Chuck the Condor. I was going to say Chuck the Condor. (laughs) (laughs) But that would be turncoat turncoats after after what happened against the Mavericks. But of, of those three that you named. Who do you think has the most realistic chance of being the Lakers coach, or do you have uh, another nomin or, or another candidate that the Lakers should maybe pursue, like Frank Vogel? I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 well I, I think the Lakers should consider uh, consider Frank Vogel again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel like he he was he was unfairly fired. Mm-hmm. You know, because because. Uh, I mean, look, the, he 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 coached the Lakers to a championship in the bubble, and then they they made the playoffs the the next year as a seventh seed. You know, LeBron got hurt, Anthony Davis got hurt. You know, when the Lakers were up two games to one against the Suns, and you know, and, and there was they had no no hope of beating them. You know, with with Anthony Davis Davis gone. Um, and then they and then they traded for Westbrook, and it was a complete disaster. They didn't make the playoffs at all. You know, the following season, and, 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 uh, not even the playing tournament because of that. Uh, he, you know, Vogel was let go. But I mean, it wasn't all his fault. Exactly. So, so I think yeah. You know, so I mean, I think if, if Frank Vogel came back and they got a, a big like you know the last, last time I was. I was on your podcast. We talked about Jonas Valanciunas. Uh, you know, be, you know, they should consider him as like you know, uh, you know, a five and move Anthony Davis to the four. That's how the Lakers won the title in the bubble. So, if you, so if you add, if you add some size, um, and, may, and maybe get it. and maybe get another shooter or two. Yeah, you know, I mean, they definitely need some more shooters. Some. Pick. Some consistent shooters. It doesn't even have to be a big name, too. You, you, you know, you, you, I mean, I mean, there there are shooters out there. I mean, I don't know if you can get Clay Thompson necessarily. I mean, I, I, Clay has struggled, but you know, but he, he, I think he could be a good 
a good, um, uh, you know, a good shooter off the bench still. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I mean, they're, I don't know what the free, I I don't completely know what the free agent class is like, but you know, I mean, there, there are guys out there, um, you know, I don't know if they're going to be able to hold on to D'Angelo Russell. I think somebody's going to give him a big offer. Um, and it will be, it'll be too much for the Lakers to, to match. Um, you, you know, but, but going, but going back to your question about, about the coaches, uh, yeah, yes, Frank Vogel and, uh, how about this, how, how about this name? Does this name sound crazy to you? JD Bickerstaff was just let go by, by, um, uh, by the Cavaliers, mm-hmm. you know, do you, do you, do you think the Lakers should consider him? Huh? That could be worth considering. The be- the more nominee is the better, so you don't, like, have to pick someone at random or you don't make, like, a bad hire. Like, get give every coach a possible chance to become a- the head coach of the Lakers and whatnot. Huh? Yeah, and the Lakers have a, you know, have a bit of a relationship with uh, – uh, uh, with with JD Bickerstaff because of his dad, his dad coached the Lakers for for a little while. Oh yeah, um, he was the interim coach, if I remember, and they actually wound up having a lot of success, even though they were pretty bad that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when was that again? Was was he interim after Mike Brown was let go? Yeah, it was. The, yeah, that was exactly the year. It was when Mike Brown was let go and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, he coached before they hired Dan Tony. Mm-hmm. No D or Antony. No D Dan. Tony. Yeah, the, the, he he was not the right coach for that team. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but I mean, I, I can't even believe Cleveland let him go. Um, I mean, it was, again, this wasn't—he—he he, he got he got the Cavs to the second round, and they lost because they lost their best player to injury again, Donovan Mitchell. I mean, I have to believe you, one would have to believe that that the Cavs let him go because Donovan—they're they're trying to negotiate something with Donovan Mitchell. Because it's it's a con, it's a uh, what either either it's a contract year for him or um, you know or he's in his final year of his of his deal on the and and the and he may ask to be traded. So I I don't know. Yeah, I, I actually never would have thought of that. I think uh, that is something to consider as well. But yeah, getting uh, I would consider JB Bickerstaff because it wasn't his fault. It's like the players are the no. ones. Yeah, the players are the ones that unfor- that decide the game and whatnot. Uh, I mean, if he was making bad calls and the players were calling him out, then I can understand him being fired. But I don't think there were any reports on that. Uh, were they? Were there? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Repeat that question again. I, I just I don't thought think there were caught report, my eye. I, I don't think there are any reports on Bickerstaff base being called out by the players and whatnot. Were there? No, I mean not that. Not that I've heard of. Okay. Then I mean, it, it, and you, you it, but I will. I will tell you this. What caught my eye just now? I was completely right. At least, according, at least according to Brian Winhorst of ESPN, um, according to Winhorst, Donovan Mitchell uh, is is going to get a two hundred million dollar Cavs contract extension offer following the Bernie B- or the, the Bernie the JB Baker staff firing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He mentioned that on on the uh, on his Hoop Collective podcast. Uh, quote, I will say this. In three weeks, the Cavs are going to meet with Mitchell. In that meeting, there's probably going to be three things that are on the agenda. One, they're going to offer him a $200 million extension. Two, you would, you'd like to think that the new head coach would be hired by that time and would have for him an idea of how he wants to play, how it would affect him and how it would affect the other players. Okay, so you, you're, you're kind of on to something there when it comes to the team. 
but I, th- I, I, I think I think the buck stops with Mitchell. I mean, I mean, according to Win Horses, certainly does. And three, a concept of what they're going to do for the roster this offseason, namely Darius Garland. Um, after going 40 and 34, reach of the second round. Uh, yeah. Yes. When Horace reported that, well, Mitchell did not ask for Bickerstaff to be fired, and we'll see about that. Uh, the Cavs believe their chances of resigning Mitchell are increased thanks to the coaching change. There you go. Interesting. Yep. I uh, it's become. I feel the NBA might be becoming more of a players' league, but oh, it's becoming. It's been like that for a long time. Yeah. I would I would say going back to LeBron's decision. No. Yep. That the, the play when LeBron made that decision, all the stars in the league felt like felt like they had, Control. you know, they had they 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 had the they have the power that you know their predecessors never really had before. You could maybe even go back to Kobe, you know, when 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 he when he when he when he asked to when he asked the Lakers to trade him back in '07. I mean, Jer- Jerry Buss said, you know, thank, thank God, I'm not trading you, but, uh, but I'm going to do everything I, I can, you know, to, to make sure that we, get, we, we put a winning team around you. And God bless him, he did. Mm-hmm. Five rings to show for it. Um, but other than that, uh, do you have anything else you want to add regarding to the Lakers coaching search before we head on out of here? Because we got about 13 minutes before... We our next show comes on. Not ne- not necessarily as far as head coaches, but um, somebody br- brought uh, somebody called in the Mason and Ireland show earlier today, and and, and uh, thought of a really good idea. If JJ Reddick has never been a head coach before, mm-hmm. but he could be a good coach if he put. If he put more experienced coaches around him as assistants, uh, and and he and he said he, he he should hire the Van Gundy brothers, Jeff and Stan. Ah, that that yeah, would be yeah. pretty wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's yeah. That's not a bad idea. I mean, it it worked. It, it worked in the bubble with Frank Vogel's coaching staff. I mean, he. I mean, Frank Vogel you know, was already a, a seasoned coach at that point, but 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 he but he he but he got an all star uh, roster of coaches too in in Lionel Hollins, Jason Kidd, um, I forget who, who the who the uh, other other couple big names were, but you know, but you know, but. But but it worked. I mean, they they were a good shooting team. They played great defense, um, and they and they used their size to their advantage too. So so and 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 it helped Jason Kidd too. Now, you know, now he's a successful coach with the Mavs. And and there are a few wins. There are what what are they? I think they're seven wins away from seven wins away from a title. Yeah. Yep. And they play tonight. Mm-hmm. But on that, I, I feel I, I feel really good about their their, their chances. By by the way, um, you know, as far as winning the title is concerned, I hope I hope that Jason Kidd eventually wins the title too with the Mavs. If there's any team I'm pulling for, it's anyone but the Celtics. I'm sorry, but same I, here. I just can't root for the Celtics. But it's a it's a lot Lakers oh. thing, but. On that note, that is going to do it for this week's episode of the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. It's high time we get on out of here. Because we got another show coming on in about 10 minutes. Yeah, dig? Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for tuning in to the SoCal Supreme Sports Show. I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Justin, always great to have you a part of the show, my brother. Anything else you want to tell the people before we head on out? Um, n- nothing really, except uh, you know we're, we're in Memorial Day weekend. Have a great, have a great long holiday weekend. You know, it's, it's pretty much the beginning of summer. 
Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, just, yeah, just have fun and be careful. Yep, and definitely apply your sunscreen because it is starting to get hot. Thank you to Patty Bax, Adam Karnick, Marcus, Los, Great, Ralph Kalise, Mike Pat, Larry B for all popping into the chat room, as well as It's Drewski. I appreciate you all tuning in and checking in on me. For everyone here at iSports Radio and to my brother, Justin Rodriguez, this is Tim Rodriguez signing off. Have yourself a great Memorial Day weekend. Thank a veteran if you see one. Wear your sunblock. Yeah. Don't cook yourself. Don't barbecue yourself. I will see you all on Monday for probably a quick episode of Set Point. Have a great weekend, and remember, SoCal is for show, Cal. Peace!